uh, I will introduce the Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium Authority, our vision of uh, creating a nuclear energy frontier research center in Virginia. And I talk a little bit about nuclear medical isotope developments, which is becoming a, a critical issue, I think. Thorium stuff started, I think, uh, with Lauren saying you can use high power accelerators for producing fissile materials. Actually, there is a group in Japan which is working on something called Fuji, I think. They want to create uranium-233 and supply it to the world wide. They designed a very large accelerator system for doing that. And uh, in Canada, where I think uh, Louis proposed use of uh, thorium with intense uh, neutron generators, that's what we are talking about here. And Charlie Bowman, maybe some of you know him, he used to be at uh, Los Alamos National Lab, and they started a project called Accelerator Transmutation of Waste, which also would produce uh, energy at the same time, basically burning the uh, this uh, long-term uh, waste material. And I think later on, Carlo Rubia uh, in CERN also came up with an energy amplifier. And the basic uh, problem until now was the cost of neutrons that are required to make these reactors work. And for Charlie Bowman's estimates here, uh, the cost is going to be reduced uh, anytime now if we implement these systems will be something like uh, 10 to the power of $5 per kilogram. And if you have about 40 grams of neutrons, that will produce one gigawatt uh, electric energy. And with the technology we have uh, in Newport News at Jefferson Lab, in principle, you can reduce the cost of these neutrons by uh, another order of magnitude. So as I mentioned, Virginia Nuclear Energy uh, Consortium Authority was established by an act of General Assembly. Uh, it is effective since July 2013. And this way, this actually paved a way for creating a non-profit Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium, and this, which is expected to be effective from September 2014, by which time uh, we are hoping to hire a, a director to run this consortium. The stakeholders of Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium Authority are shown here, and the blue color indicates they're all nuclear energy uh, companies in principle. And the orange are the universities that have new nuclear energy uh, educational programs uh, established in the last couple of years. And the rest are the educational institutions or the entities that are interested in this. The goals of the VNEC, that is the consortium, is to bring all, Virgin, all of Virginia's nuclear industry players together around a single table to, identity, to identify opportunities and develop strategies for supporting and expanding the nuclear industry in Virginia across the country and around the globe. And basically, also, they like to support or assist uh, successful applications for federal grants. These are the two main goals. And of course, uh, educating the uh, new manpower uh, in nuclear energy related areas is also a very important aspect of this goal. Our vision, that is the ADS Consortium, uh, Virginia ADS Consortium, that's a uh, conglomeration of uh, universities, uh, federal labs, and industry, is a creation of a science and technology center for the application of high power accelerators for the advancement of innovative multidisciplinary science. And we hope to start a Virginia Nuclear Energy Frontier Research Center somewhere near Jefferson Lab in future. And the center would basically foster the same goals that are foreseen by the authority. The institutions that are, of, you know, that are supporting uh, this N, uh, activity are listed here. Uh, basically, there are universities, industry, and also some of the national labs around us. The long-term goals of our uh, center is to develop isotopes uh, and also production, uh, radiation damage studies of fuel cell, fuel cycle materials, activation, activation analysis using photon and neutrons, energy production, either electrical or direct heat applications, waste transmutation, and breeding uh, uranium-233, helium-3, etc. 
Our immediate focus is to get into nuclear medical isotope developments because they are going to be in very short supply soon as Canadian nuclear reactors are going to be shut down in a couple of years. And also this will be entry vehicle technology to show early success with the accelerator based systems. And this also can give you plentiful medical isotopes for medical imaging and for cancer treatment. And here is the schematic of how we would like to uh, develop these isotopes. We take the CW electrons that are uh, that can be produced uh, very uh, economically with the technology we have. And basically the electrons hit the target in the middle and that produces both the gamma as well as the neutrons. And gammas are going only in the forward direction, hits the target uh, for photonuclear production of medical isotopes, and neutrons can be captured around. And in principle with this you can produce a large number of medical isotopes. Copper 67 is the one we are going to be focusing initially because it has both uh, diagnostics as well as treatment possibilities, that is, theranostic applications. And the half-life of this uh, copper 67 is about 2.58 days. And the radiation decay mode is beta decay. And uh, the, the gamma constant of that is about 0.97 millirem per hour. Uh, for one milli curie at 30 centimeters. Basically, this is the longest living copper radioisotope and is one best suited for uh, immunotherapy. Its long half-life is similar to biological half-life of many monoclonal antibodies. Basically, this is the work that is being done at uh, uh, Center for Molecular Imaging, which is part of Virginia Commonwealth University's uh, School of Medicine. And they plan to incorporate copper 67 uh, as shown in the C inside the, uh, the core. And uh, in this fashion, I believe it can be used as a, uh, not only for imaging, but also for treatment, treating the cancers. And the schematic of the, our center where we will be producing uh, these medical isotopes is shown here. Uh, we use a thermoelectronic ion gun on the top. And then we have a cryo module, which is a standard stuff that we have, uh, uh, which can produce up to 100 mV electrons, and then the target and electron beam dump. And this is a, a existing thermionic gun, and this is the existing 100 mV CWSRF NAC at Jefferson Lab, and we will be using uh, similar systems at this center. Uh, the one thing that I could say uh, is that the technology has improved so drastically, the efficiency of these uh, SRF structures has improved by a factor of uh, four now compared to what are, are currently being used. As a result, uh, one will be able to produce the neutrons in a cost-effective manner. And this is the potential site where we will be establishing the uh, Virginia Nuclear Energy Frontier Research Center, which is adjacent to Jefferson Lab. This is a new tech center that has been approved by the city uh, of Newport News recently. We are hoping to build this center here uh, in the next uh, few years. And my interest into thorium uh, came mainly uh, as interaction with our Indian colleagues. And as you know, they have a three-stage uh, nuclear energy program. And the third stage is basically using thorium. Uh, you, they will be breeding uranium-233 in the reactors, uh, fast breeder reactors. And then they build the fleet of uranium-233 eventually. This is their goal. And they require the accelerator technology. And that's the reason why I'm uh, involved in this and interested in this field. And as you know, the world's first ADS project is uh, supposed to be built in, uh, uh, is, will be built in uh, Belgium, and it's known as the Mira project. And the schematic is shown here. The interesting thing is they'll be using lead bismuth coolant technology uh, for this reactor. And we actually have organized several international workshops on ADS, accelerated driven systems and thorium utilization. And the third would be at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University uh, uh, during October 14 to 17. And we uh, welcome you all uh, for this meeting. 
In summary, Virginia General Assembly establishes Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium Authority to promote nuclear energy R&D uh, and also for educating future generation of scientists and engineers. Virginia Nuclear Energy Frontier Research Center is being planned to initially develop nuclear medical isotopes for imaging and therapeutic applications based on 50 MeV CW electron DNAC technology under the VNAC umbrella. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues at Virginia ADS Consortium Institutions and then Virginia Authority for their encouragement and thank you.